What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Ham Radio Crash Course. Welcome to Saturday. Hope you're having fun this week. I hope you got out and played some radio. I was uh, chasing a lot of poda this uh, this morning as I was getting ready for doing the show here. So yeah, thanks everybody for coming out. We're gonna have some fun with Winlink. Particularly Vara Winlink, which is two applications. Okay, so links are in the description if you want to follow along with me. I recommend you do that. Hopefully that helps. And we'll exchange some emails. Enjoy the memes as we kick things off. And thanks again. All right. How's it going, everybody? I am Josh Ki Six N A Z. Thanks for clicking on the Hammer to Crash Course. Uh, you'll you'll notice my wonderful shirt. Uh, this was the shirt that didn't arrive for the Chris or the uh, Halloween episode we did last week. So I just wore my same costume. Uh, anybody know what this is from? Uh, Hundred Internets, if you know what this is from. While we uh, while you guys discuss that, I will open up my beer and we'll get right into this. Uh, so I am drinking. There you go. Focus. Uh, green screen's really killing this. But this is the spooky uniform, uh, unicorn, wild ghost pepper guava milkshake IPA. <laughs> it's, it's actually really spicy. It's the spiciest beer I've ever had. And yes, I've had spicier, uh, spicy beers. That is a thing that exists. This is legit spicy. Uh, no one needs to super chat me to drink it because I actually do like it. I'm not going to cringe or anything like that. So this isn't a gimmick. I actually do like it. It's it's actually pretty good if you like spicy things. So we'll pour this one out while I look at the... Oh, okay, MRD got it immediately. I knew he would, but yeah. So Ricky. <laughs> I can't do a Ricky voice, so don't, don't ask. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so anyway, thanks, everybody, for coming out. Again, we're talking about uh, uh, Vara Winlink today. And that is a – it works on HF and it works on VHF for ham radio. It's a way to exchange emails. And, yes, this can be done without the Internet. But if you do have Internet or at least Internet is at the node that you're connected to, uh, they can use that to access your email and send it to you over radio. So you don't need the Internet. You just need an ability to reach a far off node, um, RMS WinLink node, to be able to send you your emails. Really handy for off-grid type stuff, staying in communication with people, other hams, and loved ones, because it's just email, right? So you can send this to whomever you want. Keep in mind, this is not secured. There's no encryption or anything like that, so don't hit me with that question. Hitting it right up front. Not encrypted, all right? Not encrypted. So there you go. Um, all right, who we got in the chat? Man, a lot of people in the chat. Thanks so much, everybody, for coming out. Appreciate it. This is your first time. Uh, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. And a big FYI, we always do an after chat after the live stream. We go over to the Discord for the Hammer to Crash Course. Link is in the description, and we answer questions. It doesn't have to be about today's show. It could be about anything related to ham radio. We try and help you out, try and answer you. So if you're stuck with a problem, it's not just me there. There's a lot of really smart people that will be in the room, and we try and help everybody. So make sure you join us. Uh, click the link in the description if you're interested, and start the process now because some people have a tough time with it. So appreciate that. All right. Okay, so let me throw up some links here and we'll get started with the whole thing. All right, so first and foremost, just want to remind everybody, hamtactical.com is the merch store that Leia runs for the Hammer to Crash Course. And her, um, oh, somebody said Broken Arrow. Her uh, her designs are what we put up. And the designs, a lot of them, the, the ideas for the designs come from our podcast. So Not Allergic to Bees, the HRCC podcast, and Allergic to Bees. So if you listen to our podcast, then you probably know what's up with that. Speaking about that, the podcast this week that we posted uh, yesterday is what I consider the biggest threats to ham radio going forward in the future. And it's probably not what you expect. And it's uh, it was a lengthy conversation where we kind of walked through it. And Leia provides her insight as kind of being a ham, but call it an outsider with different viewpoints than I do. And so it was a lot of fun. So I really do appreciate that. Okay, let's go ahead and pull this up real quick. Winlink, uh, you go to winlink.org, and that is the website. And if you go to download, 
that's where you go ahead. <laughs> it's a fairly nondescript website uh, for download, but you just download WinLink Express and you're going to want to run it. Thank you, the Gaming Ham. Appreciate you becoming a member there. It means a lot. Thank you. Uh, go ahead and download that and make sure you install it as an admin. Right click on both of these installs and click Run as Administrator when you're on Windows. That's what you want to do to make sure you do this correctly. Also, Vara HF by EA5HVK. So, what is Vara? Vara is a software modem. We're running an application that is going to create the tones and receive the tones that exchange the data that we're going to put out over HF. There's a little diagram here that kind of best explains it. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. But yeah, we're using an application. Actually, WinLink Express is going to open Vara for us, and it's going to talk to Vara. And then we're going to be able to make the connection to those, those gateways, those RMS nodes, to be able to receive the email. And if anybody's curious, I am KI6NAZ on WinLink. If you'd like to send an email, I will be pulling them up right now as an example of what it looks like uh, when you start out with using WinLink. So why are we using uh, Vara? Well, Vara is really fast. And yes, there is a demo for this and you can use it. It's a little bit slower when you use the demo. If you pay for a license, it's very, very quick. And I will demonstrate that as we go along. If we didn't want to go down that road, then you could go download what these are called Pactor, Pactor modems. The problem, though, is you see those prices? Those prices are insane. Uh, the cheapest one is $1,200. That is a ICOM 7300. That is a modem that you connect to a radio that does Pactor for exchanging messages like this. You can use a Pactor modem for many things. One of those things is WinLink. In this case, though, we're not doing this. We're doing Vara. So I just wanted to provide that so you guys knew what kind of the background is. There's a lot of really good, the ham prepper, no, sorry. Is it the ham? The Who does the uh, the Pactor modem videos? Com prepper. I think so. Anyway, somebody will correct me in the chat. A lot of good videos on Pactor modems. If you do want to look those up, uh, go ahead. I didn't really want to socket a bunch of money into doing that. So I did not buy a Pactor modem. Maybe in the future, but not at this point. Okay, so here is WinLink Express running. It looks like a very, you know, traditional WinLink or sorry, email application that you might use. Uh, if you remember the, the late 90s, early 2000s, they kind of looked a lot like this, right? And so I've got an inbox full of stuff. I can right click on any of these messages. Um, and I can reply to it. It pops up a window. So it's just like any email application. And I could, uh, yeah, close anyway. Anyway, so I can type up replies and it'll fill up my outbox for emails. So just like what you think, this is all should be very straightforward. You shouldn't have to think too much about this. It just functions like any old uh, email application. So what I'm going to do, though, is in this drop down, by the way, as you're installing this, go ahead and be installing in the background if you're doing this live with me. Uh, and we'll get back to you in a second for the setup. But I want to show you what it looks like if it's running correctly. Under open sessions towards the top of the screen, which is this uh, little Vara HF win link, I want to show you what some of the options are here. Vara does come in an FM flavor as well, so you can use this with your FM mobile radio or even your HT if it has the capability to connect to it, or maybe you have a Mobi-linked Bluetooth TNC. You could use Vara FM uh, particularly for this, so works pretty well in that case, so keep that in mind too. WinLink Express will do Packet, it will do RDOP, it will do Vara, as we've already mentioned, and this is the peer-to-peer -peer option. Peer-to-peer -peer is where you're literally just messaging between um, stations, right? This, In this case, we're going to be using the WinLink um, RMS nodes that we're going to try and get into. And I have a couple of favorites that I use all the time. And don't worry, this will all make much more sense as we go along. Uh, but I'm going to show you it working first before anything else. Pactor, there's that Pactor again. And then we'll go back up uh, to Vara HF. So I'm going to click Open Session, which is right next to that dropdown. And when that happens, it, it opens up a new window. And I'll go ahead and you notice my computer is connected to my radio correctly because the radio automatically switched over to 7.100.50. And that's because that's where my favorite station is, this AJ7V, uh, sorry, AJ7C. And it is on the 7.102 megahertz. Again, I'm showing you what this looks like from it complete so that you get an idea for it. And then uh, we'll show you how to set it up. So this is the Vara application running right next to it with the little gauges. And I'm going to go ahead and click Start. And you can see the action happening. So ALC is a little high on my ICOM. I can lower that down. And in fact, we will be doing that. And this is what it sounds like. 
So I'm sending out a request to have this station reply to me. And there it is. So now I'm transmitting. It's a handshake back and forth. We're receiving right now. So those little green dots there and that uh, kind of a tealish square, that's the actual data that I'm receiving. And we'll start to see a bar graph of how quickly I'm getting messages. It's got a very R2-D2 sound. Maybe if R2-D2 is a little upset. Oh boy, this is spicy. This is my first sip. So now I'm transmitting back. You can tell, obviously, when I'm receiving and transmitting. Because you're seeing the 7610 right there. Help, computer. Stop all the downloading. <laughs> That's right. So as you can see now, my inbox is starting to fill out. So thanks, everybody, for sending me email messages. And don't worry, again, I will show you how to set this all up. And there we go. Okay, that's it. So how many emails did we receive? Uh, five emails. So five emails in what I would call pretty fast for HF. Um, there can be attachments. You can have images, but generally it's not recommended because, again, these are all in the clear and stuff like that. So keep that in mind when you go about doing this. Just remember, you know, it's, it's in the open. People can decode your emails technically. So, you know, we keep that in mind. Okay, I'll show you a quick one here. Winlink video. And this is from K6DLC. Josh, thank you for showing Vara from Daniel. Thank you. AE0FY says, hi, this is AE0FY. Thanks for the stream tonight. No changes or editing of this messages are allowed. Okay, got it. <clears throat> I wouldn't do that to you. All right, I'm going to close out of the session. Again, the Vara session that WinLink has opened. And what will happen is it will close Vara down too. It's gone. Okay. I have covered a lot of this information in another WinLink video, so I'm going to cover the WinLink Express side of this relatively quickly, and we're going to be focusing more on the VARA side of the house. All right, what else we got? Uh, that's the big ones. You can add a GPS. Uh, yeah, I know. My my noise force through the roof right now. That's why I often am using the um, other side as the receive, which is a uh, listening loop or a receive loop. Uh, preferences. There's not much I mess with, actually. I leave a lot of this alone. And, you know, we can we can just leave that for now. If you want to know more information about some of the other details you can do, which I'll tap into some of the forms that you can fill out. Um, after the fact, you can go to that other video that I did. But anyway, let's top, tap back into the VARA. So open a session. Remember, we're opening a VARA session from that dropdown. Now, let's focus on the WinLink session window right here. Let me close my my radio for a second so you can see okay so this is your session window if you go to settings and you go to vara tnc setup that should be something you'll see um, you can pretty much leave this alone but you do want to note that it is going to try and look up that file location that wherever you put it c colon vara vara.exe keep in mind that um if you install Vara and WinLink Express kind of at the same time, it should just install to the default location. I probably would just let it install to the default location. That way, it'll make sure to pull it up uh, whenever you launch a Vara HF WinLink session. Keep it default. It'll make it easy. But if you do change it, you'll have to provide the location in here. Uh, everything else I leave the same. The local host I leave the same and the port as well. And I check the box, automatically launch Vara TNC when session is open. That'll likely happen already. So you can just kind of click cancel and leave it default if you haven't changed anything. If you go to radio setup under the settings drop down and click it. All right. So this is where you're going to have to get uh, used to or, or have more familiarity with your radio. I am using an ICOM 7600 here, even though I am on a 7610. There is a drop down for the 7300. There is a drop down for various Kenwoods. Lots of Yesus. Lots of Yesus are used in Vara, Elecraft, KX2, or K2, K3. 
Um, and then you can just do a manual setup as well. So I'm going to go back to my 7600. Make sure you pick your radio. If your radio, your specific radio is not in that list, then just go ahead and uh, try out an adjacent one. So if you have a 7100, an ICOM 7100, you might want to try an ICOM 7000 or a 7300 will work in some cases. So you may have to jump around a little bit to find one that works. I find that when I'm using my 705, my QRP radio, that if I use the 7300, then it will work generally pretty, pretty well. Uh, okay, hold on here. See, I'm checking the uh, checking the chat, making sure I'm not missing any questions. Let me know if you have any questions as we go. And thanks again, Gaming Ham, for the uh, for the uh, membership. Okay, next thing you're going to need to do is select your COM port that your radio is connected to, and the best way I do that is Device Manager. So bring up your Windows Device Manager right here, and go under Ports. And under ports, you're likely going to have one or likely two ports that are for your computer, or sorry, your radio. That's the cat control port. You're going to want to select that um, from this drop-down list. And then your baud rate is likely going to be controlled on the radio side, so you will have to go into the menus and determine what your baud rate is. So make sure you, you go ahead and do that. <clears throat> and that should short itself out. Okay. <clears throat> Enable RTS, enable DTR. I don't really mess with that. Um, and then make sure that whatever it is you are doing on the radio selection side, which is kind of like the, the receive side, that your PTT port, which is uh, optional in this case, but if you're using like an ICOM 7300 or a 7610, you'll likely put that in the dropdown. Or if you're using the Yaesu for that instance, so on and so forth. If you have set up a... Um, if you've set up WSJTX or JSA call on your computers before, it's likely the same here. You're going to be doing something very similar. Same kind of approach. Okay, and then we're going to hit close. All right, so that's like cat control, right? So we've sorted out the ability for WinLink to now control your radio, change the frequencies, and key it. That's good because you are likely going to be jumping around a lot when you get this set up. And I will show you what that looks like too. Don't worry. So that's the first thing. Get your cat control working. If you at me in the chat, ham, at ham radio crash course, and you uh, mention if you're having a specific problem along the way, I'll see it. And that way I can try and answer it. But if you're getting into having difficulties connecting your computer to your radio, consider joining the Discord. There are, again, plenty of people, not just me, who can help you at any time because, you know, I sleep um, and I you know, edit videos and try and play radio when I can. Um, so just keep that in mind. That's the best thing to do. Or join us on the after chat right after this, and we'll help you sort it out. Okay, so now we're going to go to Vara. Oh, wait, you know what? One more thing. Let me check. Uh, no, that's not it. We don't need to do transmit level test, DSP test, or best channel setup right now, so we can leave that alone. Okay, sliding over to the Vara side. Go to settings, Vara setup. Now, I have a registered copy of VARA, so that's why I have KI6NAZ with my registration key in there. I leave everything here the same, but what you will need to do is make sure that the command port, your TCP port, is open for that 127.0.0.1 that we showed on the uh, session, the WinLink session side of the house. I leave allow VARA check for updates via internet because it just tells you when there's a software update. Now, here is something I will mention that I think is important particularly if you're doing QRP with VARA, you want to make sure that your retries are around 15. And I believe 15 is default, so just leave it default. And the reason for that is my favorite uh, RMS nodes that I connect to, they usually take 5 to 15 retries of sending that packet, that connection packet out, or that, you know, that, that burst before they wake up and you'll obviously you'll know that they're waking up because they'll send like a, a tuning tone because these are automated systems right there's not some guy there that's like switchboard clicking on stuff so you need to send that a couple of times until that uh, node wakes up and goes oh i got a i got a customer here and turns on so i leave it at 15 
if you want to play with it, you can, but I would start with 15, possibly even going to 20. While, while we're saying that, everybody listening to this, right? You probably need an appropriate antenna or an antenna that's going to be happy with you doing a pretty intensive digital mode. If you've got a lot of emails and you're sending a lot of traffic back and forth, your antenna is going to be you're you're going to be using it at um at full duty cycle, which means you're like putting all the power into that antenna. So antennas that are resonant and built in in such a way that it'll handle the power consistently pushing through them, probably a good idea. DX Commander, probably a good call. A Dipole is probably a good call. Where you sometimes run into issues is if it's a high Q antenna. Somebody mentioned Wild Cascadia Radio says hamstick. Probably not a hamstick. And so here's what I'd say. If you took the power output that a hamstick will take for Morse code and you cut that in half, that would be the starting point that I, I would go on. If you're using an NFED half wave or random wire with a 9 to 1 transformer, I would half the Morse code, um, what that antenna will accept if you were doing Morse code or something full duty cycle, because it will get hot, particularly if you're doing a lot of transmitting, which you will be if you're doing WinLink. So that's, keep that in mind uh, when you're thinking about doing this, okay? All right, so back under settings. So we covered the VARA setup. Now we're going to sound card. All right, so sound card is very much like if you're used to doing WSJTX, remember you have to select both the device input and the device output. And I have the devices selected that match my 7610, same would be for the 7300. So you're going to uh, go in here and you're going to select the right audio devices, which are like your microphones and your speaker that are activated or controlled, uh, whatever radio you're using. So someone is actively using that node right now. I'll show you. Oh, they just finished. You see the lines? So nodes, work's happening right now. People out there sending emails. All right, I'm going to slide off frequency a little bit, and we're going to do this audio test because I'm going to pull back on my drive level and lower my ALC. Do you see that picture, that handy picture of a 7300 that they add on the menu? We're going to set that right now. So my ALC was a little high, so I'm going to bring back up my radio. So there's my radio to the right, and there's what it should look like on the left. And realistically, if you're um if you're looking at the ALC bar on the ICOMS radios, that red line, as long as you're within that red line, you're good. But it's even better if you start to lower it down even further and you get right there at the edge, the leftmost edge is best. But you don't want it to be off the screen. So keep that in mind. Whenever I see that ALC meter, it reminds me of uh, my first car, which is a, a 1967 Mustang. And it had this uh, temperature gauge. And the, the good portion was just like this whole thing. And then on the very left side, there was low. And then on the very right side, there was high. And anything, if it's in there, you're good. So th that's kind of how I look at ALC. But I try to be on the leftmost side. So I'm going to hit tune. And my radio is transmitting. And I'm just going to back this off until I see that ALC drop. And too far, that's probably good enough for now. And then I'll stop. So let's check that again. So probably fine. Let's let's dial it back to right here. How's that? Perfect. So then I'll stop. OK, so you need to do that. That's the you know part of all this. You don't want to overdrive your ALC because it'll be distorted on the receive side. You may not even be able to open up the RMS gateway that you're trying to hear. So make sure you do that. OK, so now if you've done that correctly, the audio test actually shows you a couple things. The first is that WinLink is appropriately keying your radio. So you have the CAT control setup, which CAT control, again, is computer aided or sorry. Yeah, computer aided transmission. No, I got that right. <laughs> so once you have that set up, that means your computer can control your WinLink software, which is what we're aiming for. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, remove my little screen there. And I'm going to bring up. I'm going back to my session now. So once you have Vara set up, the screen down here, which we have right now, it's good to go. You, you don't really have to touch anything. You just kind of look at it as a status monitor. Now what I want to do is I want to pull up some channels. So if you hit channel, we're going to, oh, by the way, this is going to happen a lot. So I have favorites that I, that I like. Uh, these are, again, frequencies and nodes that I know work for me when I'm home. And 
this would be an instance where you want um <coughs> This is an instance where you're like in a new location or you're trying to find new nodes. You go to channel selection. And when you do this for the first time, or this gets updated all the time, these propagation estimates get updated, these SFI values. So if you click yes, it will load and download from the internet, which you can see it right here. All right, it's loading. It'll go for a while too, so you're gonna need to do this. Now, what it's gonna try and do is give you a path reliability estimate and quality estimate, as well as it'll give you bearing in degrees and the distance from your home QTH because you put your home QTH in the WinLink software, right? Because that's gonna be important. Now, some things to keep in mind is that you can download this this uh, update for reliability over the air. You don't have to be connected to the internet, but if you have connection to the internet, it's often pretty easy to just do it that way. So what's going to happen is you can sort by distance from your home, QTH, or you can use um, the estimated path reliability. And that's kind of what I do. So let me flip this over. I'll click the little, I'll click this right here. So that's the furthest way. Wait, there we go clicked it too many times. So if I scroll up to the top here, look at that. I've got, oop, I did it again. Stop. Uh, this AJ7C is 37 kilometers from my house. Wow. That's pretty close. And that was the one I started out the whole thing with um, because it's such an easy one to test with. I don't often use that, but I know it's reliable. So we'll try one that's a little bit harder here. You can keep going away though, right? So we can keep going further out, further out, further out. And you're probably noting, if you see the red, those are frequencies that WinLink is trying to help you say like, ah, you probably can't make a contact there because it's on a frequency that's probably not a good path between you and that location. So maybe skip it. What you'll see a lot as it starts to get darker and the sun cycle changes, you'll probably see that 40 meters and 80 meters is what you're going to see often uh, if you do path reliability. Or you can just start in close and, and just work your way out until you work uh, what it is you want to work on. The other thing you'll want to do is note the mode. This mode here, right here, this guy. If you want it to go fast and move as much data as possible, you're going to go V2300. If you are uh, in a less reliable situation or you don't have a, a very clear connection to the node that you're trying to hit, you might want to use 500, particularly if you're doing like QRP or something like that. So that's when you might use the V500 nodes. So this K0000, this guy has, look at all these nodes he has. He has a 30 meter node, a 20 meter node, an 80 meter node, or an RMS gateway, and a 40 meter, as well as 18 megahertz. Man, he's, he's got everything, right? And he's got varying degrees of, of these 500s, the V500s, and the 2300s. I do, however, like his 40 meter, the 7101.500. So I'm going to go select that. So I'm going to double, I'm going to click select after I've clicked it. And now my session should switch over. It did. K0. Or sorry, K O zero O O O. Now I believe so. I didn't. Uh, bearing is forty three. If you're using uh, a directional antenna, this would be the time that you would adjust it. So I'm going to go ahead and click start now, and see if we can make a connection to that. Uh... So we are trying to send out that. Are you home? Are you home? Can you send me emails? Can you send me emails? message to this remote gateway. Ah, you hear that? There he is. So that had to run like what? Uh, almost 10 times? Now that this station is tw almost 20 over S9 to me. OK, but it still took that long for him to acknowledge, oh, hey, this guy's here. So I'm assuming you can probably hear me OK. Just as a note, I am running at 100 watts, but you don't need to. In fact, I use uh, I use WinLink a lot when I am out in the field with my 705 into my laptop. Works fine. 
So now we're downloading again. I haven't updated any emails yet, and already we got more emails coming in. So thanks everybody for sending the emails. Oh, that's really fast. When it switches to that, like, <laughs> I don't know if anybody's noting the BPS. That's the 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 bits per second that we're pulling in. So it it the screen changes really fast right next to me, but look out for it. So that's almost what 270 B BPS. Pretty good. So there you go. We're moving right through it. Lots of emails. Uh, so Greg, KD2, MICS, NFED, half wave for QRP. That's probably fine for QRP. Running QRP is going to be fine uh, with Winlink. But again, um, you need to be cautious of the uh, transformer in whatever antenna you're using that's like an end fed so the 9 to 1 on on or the 49 to 1 on on that box that magic box that coax connects into and the line goes out it's not magic it's a transformer it's going to heat up uh, inevitably even if you've got the best end fed half wave ever it's going to heat up when you start dropping uh, rf into it so keep that in mind jcw2j says mention you don't need that much power for winlink this is a true statement, and if you're going to do Winlink often and you have a reliable path to a gateway, dial your power back until you start to, like, you'll start seeing NAC messages. In fact, we can we can demonstrate that. A NAC is a not acknowledgement. So if you look right here on my screen, there says there's a little square that says ACK, and then below that says NAC. What will happen is you'll start to go into this kind of death cycle where the, the gateway is trying to contact you and you're trying to respond, but the gateway's not hearing you. And so you keep getting, you keep sending NAC messages. It's NAC depending on the direction. You could get NACed by them not hearing you and you could knock them because you didn't hear them. But you'll start seeing that a lot. And that will imply that you either need to bump up your power or you need to go check that antenna and make sure it's not too hot. Maybe let it cool down if you were running it too hard um, and adjust things appropriately. So just keep an eye out for that. That's like, really the thing to look out for if you start seeing a lot of NAC pop-ups. That's the biggest thing I would say to keep an eye out when you're doing this after you get it set up and uh, running correctly. Uh, no Code General asks, so my 49 to 1 will heat up. What should I do about that? I want to be really clear. WinLink is not special. Anything that you use that's full duty cycle, like a digital mode or Morse code, is going to heat up your 49 to 1 on on, depending on how much power you're putting down. If you notice that it's getting hot, and you may even notice your SWR starts to climb, that's why I often leave that meter display up on my radio. If I'm doing WinLink, like a lot of WinLink, and I'm, I've got like a ton of emails I'm sending out, or I'm receiving a lot, and I see one of my antennas being an NFED half wave, if I see that SWR start to creep, that's my notice that I need to dial back the power. Once I dial back the power, you know, enough um, that I'm still making a contact to the, to the gateway, but you get the idea that that you're going to have to find a balance of power output. Jody says the re the retries can pile up when the transformer heats up during a QSO and what started fine will fade away as yes, as the transformer saturates. So that's what it is. It's saturating. When it becomes saturated, then your SWR is going to creep up and uh, you may not be able to make a contact with that gateway anymore. The only way you'll know though, is if you start backing off um, the, the RF, the, your, your drive. And if the heat starts to come down, you see that as the SWR going back to what it was initially. So keep that in mind. Okay. So we found a node that is good. I like this node. I would click add to favorites, which I think it already is, but we'll do it anyway. So add to favorites is this button right here. And now I've got a growing list of nodes that I have. So yeah, he's got so many. He's got like two nodes on V2300. Uh, so one is the 7103500 and the other one is this 7101.500. So let's take a look at some of the emails I got. Oh, this this requester, so this is the other thing that'll come up. This requester will want an acknowledgement or a receipt of transmission. When you click on the, the email, you can either approve or deny. I'll click OK. And Dave says, Monday night, the... Uh, 
Algoma Amateur Radio Club asked me to do an intro to WinLink following up my intro. I'll be pointing the group your way. All right. Very good. Thank you for that. Watching the live stream sent via HF. Check out Vara Chat. Oh, Vara Chat. I will have to do that. Oh, yeah. That's the... Uh, yeah. Um, okay. I will. Thank you. N0GES. And then we got, hello, Josh. I almost had a contact with you the other day on 40 meter FT8 from Dave. Well, maybe you'll be able to do that today on the after chat. I often will run FT8 when I'm doing the after chat because FT8 is easy to run in the background while you're doing other things. Hi from Canada, watching the live stream. I'm waiting for one that I can just have a quick answer to. Sent w oh, so here you go. Sent with the MobiLinked TNC3 connected to a Baofeng through VE7 LAN. Nicely done. Uh, K2YE says you pointed me towards the L uh, the Long Island CW Club, and I can proudly say I know Morse code. Fantastic, Jim. In fact, I'll probably reply to him. Dennis. Hey, Dennis is in the chat. 86 DM. Sending this via Vara FM. Thanks for doing the video on Vara. It's great stuff. I hope many people use it. I do too. It works really well. As the subject says, just saying hello. There's another bug. Uh, as the subject says, just saying hello and wanted to thank you. Your video has been really helpful. Thanks. I appreciate it. And... Let's go sent via Vara Winlink 80 meters. Thanks for the stream tonight. Okay, let me go back to, I'll just click on this one. Um, I'll do a reply real quick. Thank you. 73, Josh, that's it. So then I'll go post to, out, post to Outbox. So you know now, now my Outbox is updated. I've got a receipt that I'm gonna send out and a message I'm gonna send. I'm already done with that session with that new favorite that I added, but I can just click back on the session page and click start again. And then WinLink will not only attempt to download more emails, but it will go look at your outbox. And if there's emails in that outbox, it will send them. So I'll click that now and we'll send. Ah, he's all warmed up now. It's all warmed up now. Hey, that's not a bad idea, Jody. Jody says, here's an interesting idea. Do an interview with the guy that has all the nodes. That must be crazy interesting Shaq, right? Well, I, I, I would. I wonder how he does live because the opening message when you join his gateway is, you're entitled to have an opinion. I'm just letting you know it's stupid. <laughs> that's, his, that's his welcome message. Welcome to my, mo my node. I, I know you have opinions. They're just dumb. <laughs> All right. All right, we got another one from KJ7LAE coming in. I want everybody to appreciate, if you're seeing this for the first time, you may be thinking to yourself, it took that long to download an email? Well, okay, sure. It, it, it does seem a little bit long. I don't think it's that long. Because I have a frame of reference of using other modes uh, for doing WinLink, and this is incredibly fast, so I love it. Hey, Rigo Dog uh, sends ten dollars super chat. Thank you so much. I'll, I'll take a sip of this beer I already like. It's really spicy. It's ghost pepper, but hey. Yeah. So anybody like um, this is a ghost pepper beer, and I'm just sipping on it. It is spicy, probably spicier than most people want, but. Yeah, the, the BPS is not even a 56K. It's not even close to that. It does take a long time. But this is completely off-grid, at least if you want to use it that way. Z0LON says, I see what you mean by the SWR. Your meter is showing an additional dot on the meter now. Um, yeah, but in my case, I can use an amp um, into my antenna, and it'll likely be fine. I wouldn't do that for VARA or for WinLink. You don't need it, but you could definitely do that. Greg, KD2MIC, is there a significant difference between the free and PD VARA? It's just the speed. If you um, pay for a license, it will go much faster. So I suggest everybody try the free version, and then as you get more used to or, or you use it more, if you like it, maybe you pay for a license. But I, I recommend you like try this out for a while, maybe even use it out in the field, get used to it, and then make a decision. You don't need to do it right now. But I will tell you, it's a fantastic piece of software, and I, I pay for it because if I'm going to make a video on it, I always buy the software to show the creator that I, I really appreciate what they're doing and incentivize them to hopefully keep it updated. 
And it has been updated quite frequently. Frequently. JC says, off the top of your head, who you who else uses WinLink besides MCOM hams? Uh I I'm thinking, who uses it? Oh, let's see. Aries, <laughs> Racy's, uh, Julian, oh eight STN is a big fan of Vara. He's made tons of videos on it. And those are all MCOM hams, right? Uh, let's see. Yes. Okay, so Dennis brings up a really good point. 86DM says, you can reach 56K on VARA FM wide. Very good point. We're down in 40 meters. The frequency is lower. Our, our throughput capability is not going to be the same as if we were using um, FM on a higher frequency too would help. But maybe that's not a big difference. I think that's more of just a requirement of our license. We're not supposed to go to that high BPS, but I could be wrong. Uh, let's see. A lot of nodes run scripts that scan several frequencies, bands, thus they need. Yeah. Sailing, this is used. Oh, yeah, that's the other one. A lot of people who use WinLink are nautical. They have an HF station on their boat. Maybe it's a sailboat with like an antenna up the mast or something like that. They use WinLink a lot for keeping in touch. Because the other thing WinLink does is, this is more of a WinLink thing. This is not a VARA thing. We're stepping outside of that for a second. Is you can go to... This, so if you go to settings, GPS position reports, you can, add, I have all that turned off, right? <laughs> I don't know anymore. Oh, no, I have to do that too. Anyway, so if you go to, if you go to GPS position reports from your station, you can send where your location is, either via a GPS receiver or via the internet, if you have the internet. So a lot of that stuff can be pulled that way, which is really helpful. So you actually will squawk out your position, which is nice. I've used that when I'm doing like winter field day or um, when I'm out in the field, I'll send a position report as part of my standard operating procedure. Get set up, blast off a position report, do an APRS beacon, check your email, and then do whatever it is I was planning on doing while I was out there. All right, what else? Let's go to message. We're going to open up a new message here. This guy right there. I'm going to go to templates. And if you remember, uh, let's see. If you remember Ham Nation a couple of, almost a month ago, a little over a month ago, Amanda did a really cool segment on talking about the um, the ICS forms, and she walked through all the different levels of forms. You can actually fill out the IC forms as a template within WinLink. This is a WinLink feature. It just comes standard with all the different types of WinLink, not VARA related at all. VARA is the um, software modem right, for transmitting email. If we go to ICS forms, we can pull up any one of the ICS forms. So we'll pull up 210, for instance. I'll select it. And it brings up a page here, which you can type in your incident, your date and period of, and then your resources along the list, and fill this out to whatever your heart's content. And then you can save it um, and submit it, and then WinLink will actually send it out. So that's something that is handy to do if you are interested in having that capability. So you can do messages as well in that way. Nateo200 says, I love the GPS positions around COVID. I kept up with a sailor from the U.S. on the way back from South America. Wow, that's awesome. Great. Let's see. Many, many comments. Thank you all. Uh, <laughs> r ragged, ragged, what is it? Ragged ub sound or raga, raga dub sound. Daddy Warhammer, have you tried any Windows emulator for iOS? No, but I just use um, VMs. I, I'll just do just whatever virtualization to, to log in. That's usually what I use. Because then you can just do uh, iPad. Super cha cha guy. Josh, it's amazing how you juggle this chat and continue to educate us hands. I'm just trying. This is actually um this is not that difficult. We're kind of like at the end. It's just Vara. I really kind of wanted to get the word out on Vara. You should be able to do what I just did very easily. IK04 says $69 is not reasonable for this modem. It totally is reasonable. Because what's our the the closest proximity of speed uh, is again 
these Pactor modems that are right here. Like that's the that's your that's your closest uh similar speed ability is Pactor. So it, it, I don't know. What do you think? $79 or $1,200? <laughs> you you call it. <laughs> your call. Uh, no, Sean, AI seven EQ. What a great question. Let's, let's pull that up. So let me, let me open this one up. We're going to go to, I don't know that it's on the standard one. Is it? Let's see. Is it under CA state forms? Where's the, I, did I feel it? I forgot where that is. General. GPS position report is something you can send. Welfare messages are something you can send under general. Radiogram, if you have a radiogram. I forgot where that is. But basically, there's a template you can pull up for a did you feel it for earthquakes. It's under USGS. Okay, thanks. KK4UTXBTV sends a super chat. Thank you so much. How well is the receive loop? uh chameleon rxl working so that's the uh that is the antenna that's on the right hand side of this radio this receiver which i didn't jump hold on let me let me switch it over and i'll get out of this uh hold on so that's the lower waterfall is the receive loop and boy i've got mad rfi that i i walked around my neighborhood with a with a a shortwave radio and i couldn't hear any noise and i shut off all the power in my house and i still have like an this basic noise floor so there's something going on and i'm gonna have to get up on the roof or something with a yagi and figure out where it's coming from but man it's pissing me off that's probably a job that i'll have to do tomorrow so that's uh the width the bandwidth of the lower screen is really really wide that's why you can see all the morse code activity that's happening right now pretty intense Rifleman1002 says, I passed my technician and general exams today and will get my call sign Monday. Can't wait to build up a QSL list. By the way, are you going to Hamcation? I haven't decided yet. There is a, a likelihood that I will. I think I'll get in trouble if I go to Hamcation without taking the family. So it may be a family trip. We'll decide. Okay. Uh, do I have power lines by my house? I do. And Tyler, last year I had to work with the power line company or the power company, uh, to sort out their power lines. They did have one that was really bad. And I ended up having the, um, the specialist team come out with all their equipment. They used my antenna to test. And then they actually brought out the direction finding stuff and they found it. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and run this again. Let's take a look at the email we got. So we're, we're getting a, not a great connection. You can see the yellow dots. Signal to noise ratio is starting to dip. So not a good connection right now. Did my wife just come in here and say, I know you're busy live streaming. Do we have a, but do we have a crab trap? I have a crab net, a hoop net.
So not great right now, right? This is kind of what happens a lot. I guess... So we can go crabbing? Off of a pier, you can go crabbing, yes. So look at the BPS. Slowed way down. Our connection reliability dropped. Largely because we got, like, massive noise. Yeah, go ahead and turn off the RFI generator, Leia. That'd be fantastic. So this is what will happen to you in a lot of cases. So we went from just like three real fast. See, there we go. SNR just dropped. We went through some really fast handshakes, got our emails, sent our emails, and then all of a sudden pff, the band dies on you, changes, whatever. This is why it's really important that you have a couple of uh, favorites, favorite gateways that are not geographically in the same places. You want them spread out a little bit. And I'll show you how to do that too right before we close out the show. Woo! I only got that one. We're trying. That green bar um, is showing my status on the session, the session window. Right here. I guess we're going crabbing, so I'll bring my uh, radios... Uh, to the to the pier, and we'll do HF radio on a pier. Yeah, Southern California has an extremely high noise floor on 40. I, I work great on the higher bands, but, man, those low bands are rough. And, by the way, it's, it's probably not, like, Southern California geographically. It's, like, literally um, electronics. It's, it's all the suburbs. It's all the sprawl where we have so many people. Uh, W9HJ, no, you can exchange these emails. You can send it to a Gmail account. A Gmail account can send an email to you. Yeah, they're fully transferable emails. Hey, we got it. All right. Very good. Um, James asked, Josh, what microphone are you using? Heil? Yes, it's a PR40. Did we wrap this up? No, we're not done yet. And there we go. End of session. And I'm firing off the uh, all clear message, and we're done. Okay, so that was the session. Took longer for one email, right? You see how fast it was before when we did like six and then five emails? Sometimes your, um, your link is bad. So KD2SXD... Says, just checking out VAR on HF with the ICOM 7300. Great topic. Wonderful. You're out there. Uh, KJ7LAE. Great channel. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okay, so now we all got all these people running on VARA. Excellent. So um, everybody go out and use VARA. Go download it. Go run it. It's gotten significantly easier to use and set up. Everybody should use it. If you go out and do POTA, if you do SODA, and you bring some kind of computer along with you, Having this capability is good. Couple of notes, you if you're running a Raspberry Pi, I don't think there's a Raspberry Pi version of VARA out, and I don't think there's a native Mac version for VARA. So you pretty much have to use Windows if you want to use VARA, and, and it is very fast. That's the reason why you use it. Last thing to show you, let's go back into the session really quick, and let me just get rid of the screen. I'm going to go back to, um, so under channel selection, right, I showed you that box with local channels, and if I did reliability path, uh, if I wanted to, of course, K K O zero O O O is showing as a 91 reliability estimate with a 53 path quality estimate. Great. If I just wanted to sort by Winlink telling me, hey, this is going to work for you, then I could do that. Sometimes Winlink isn't the best at this, though. So there's another option. If you go uh, back to here and you click map. 
here are your um, RMS gateways that you can see. So this guy, right? Where is he? Where is he? There he is. So uh, that K O zero O O O is outside of Las Vegas. So I'm making the jump to Las Vegas to get to them. But if I wanted to, I could go further out than that, and you can see um, the colors start to change. So this K D, this guy K D seven T N G. I wonder if he's got a toilets in his home. T N G. Podcast listeners, look at that. Um, then he's orange to me because the path reliability is much lower. And then you got down south here in Mexico, XE two H S. So you could just visualize this if you wanted to. Um, and, and choose which nodes you use that way. Unless you are uh, using a NVIS antenna, it may not be possible, particularly if you're using a vertical, uh, to actually make connection to local nodes like these guys. See all these local nodes that I have? I've got A, J, 7, C is in LA. K6, RIF is up around P past Pomona. And then you got k6 bi so if you're not doing um nvis which is the vertical and back down near vertical incident skywave then you probably won't be able to make contact like that so just keep that in mind too mapping it is great because it makes it a little bit easier plus you get the bearing information if you're using a directional antenna okay felix farquharson uh vara is free but a human being actually developed it and that human being used their technical ability to create a great tool you don't have to pay for it, but I definitely support supporting creators in what they do if it is helpful. And Vara is very helpful. So maybe contact the creator with that uh, comment you have there if you think that's something you want to do. Uh, okay, Odog1999 asks, how powerful of a laptop do you need to run Winlink Vara? I run it on my clapped out uh, Panasonic Toughbook, my CFC2, which is 2013-ish era. It, run when, it runs Windows 10, but is not very fast at all. And uh, most ham radio applications run just fine on it. WinLink is not a very taxing software, so you should be just fine with it. Most ham radio software is not taxing. Ray Davidson, M0RAY. Josh, have you thought about using an X-Phase noise-canceling device in line with your antenna system? Um, I have, but those are the ones where you have to go in and constantly like tweak it, and I kind of don't want to mess with that. Realistically, I want to find the problem and fix it. That's almost half the fun for me. It's frustrating fun and masochistic fun, but fun nonetheless. All right. Well, I think we got through most of the comments and questions. I hope this was helpful. We'll be in the after chat over on the Discord side if you want to follow us over there and you have questions on setting up Vara, setting up Winlink, and we'll be happy to do it. And keep sending me those emails. I, I will reply to them offline here and, and send them out. Appreciate you guys doing that. This this whole video was recommended by or voted on by the Patreon patrons. Every first live stream of the month, I let the patrons pick the episode. We do a big, long list. It's is it almost 30. It's almost 30 show topics, and they pick for the ones they want me to talk about. And so this week, this for this month of November, this was the topic, Vara Winlink. So hopefully... The patrons enjoyed it, and I thank you for your support over on Patreon. I pretty much finished my ghost pepper beer, and so that's a big cheers for the brew crew, too. Uh, Rifleman asks, you got a link for that Discord? Yes, it's in the description of this video, this very video. Dennis Schultz says, can you show using Moby Lynx TNC? Is it also a sound card? Uh it is not a sound card per se, but um, I have done a video on the MobiLink TNC. Can you show? Do, 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 do. See you tomorrow. Yes, Ghost Pepper Beer, Nateo. Hey, there's Linux guy. Wasn't he in the, I think he was in the chat earlier. Anyway, cheers. Thank you. A lot of these folks are in the chat. I really do hope this was helpful. And um, I will be posting another Another post on Patreon for quest or new topics that people want to add to the ever-growing list. So this is a lot of fun. I do appreciate it. Okay. Very good. Um, do Oh, there's the link, too. So Streamlabs also drops the links for me, too. So there's the link. It's in the chat room right now. Remember to join the HRCC Discord. There's Bunny. Cheers to Bunny. Cheers to everybody. Thank you for the Patreon support. I really do appreciate it. 
beside Boom and Nathan. David, thank you so much. KY4GM, enjoyed the content as always. Thank you so much. And there's the brew crew. Thank you for the brew crew. Do appreciate it. I hope that uh, today's stream wasn't too like brain injuring because um, this is, as far as like digital modes go, this is probably the most straightforward. I think now WinLink has gotten a lot easier to use. The only trouble you'll get into is if you can't use the Hamlib libraries for connecting to a, a particular computer. You may have to find other ways to do that. If you have big problems with that, if for some reason your computer or your radio will just not connect to your computer or vice versa, join us in the after chat, join the Discord, and, and send me a message because there are some ways around it. I have done videos on it to talk about it. You can use things like FL, uh, FL Rig or Omni Rig, which is software that goes in between your computer, in between WinLink and um, and your radio, basically. And that software handles the connection. And then you just use your WinLink software or WSGTX or uh, JSA call, whatever, to connect to that Omni Omni Rig profile or FL Rig profile. And those are all words you can you can Google. So. Go ahead and check that out as well. Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll play you out with some memes. Thanks so much. If this was helpful and you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up, and I'll talk to you later. 73. See ya. Yeah, I forgot WinLink is a, a minefield for GPS information, addresses, all that fun stuff, so... I'll uh, be showing up to the Discord a little later. Give me five, ten minutes. But, but go ahead, you guys sort it out. I'll meet you out there. Start discussing amongst yourselves. I've got to go delete some clips out of the live stream. And as always, I do live stream to Twitch after the show. So I'm Ham Radio Crash Course on Twitch if you'd like to watch our after chat live stream. Mindful Munchkin. Yeah, you can send WinLink uh, over the internet via their web software. Um, and you can also use the internet as well. But in this case, we were doing it over RF, at least to get to the gateway. All right.